Good morning. Welcome. I'm Mary Winter, a gerontologist and the owner of About Senior Solutions, and you are watching Visionary Aging because we want you to be empowered through your aging process. We want you to have good information, education, and make sure that you are in control of how well you age, and you are in control. So today, our guests are uh, Herbie J. Pilato. He has a really interesting book that coming out on Sunny and Cher, how, how their real life and their personal lives parallel or not. Uh, and we also have our very own Melinda Hughes on. She's going to talk a little bit about ageism in, the, in TV and, and how that affects us in real life. So we're having this little TV parallel today. We also have Steve McCullough, who has a very interesting particular question. And um, maybe the individual has a little bit of poor insight and the family's looking for some direction. So we'll definitely talk with them today. I have a fantastic 100-year-old who, um, who happens to be the oldest survivor of Pearl Harbor. So let's go ahead and talk about Mr. Higgins. We're going to find him here with us. And uh, let's see. Here we go. We're gonna find. We're gonna find Mr. Higgins here because this is an incredible picture, actually. And we want to thank the. Uh, we want to thank the bulletin for his photo and this fantastic information. And let's see. Am I muted? No, I am not muted. Good. Okay. So Dick uh, is the oldest survivor, and he lives in Central Oregon. And he gathered with several friends who were close to him and lined the walkway to his home, all these friends. And he had a fabulous birthday banner at the entrance of his home. He does have some difficulty hearing and seeing, but he is fantastic in regards to sharing his stories. And I, I would think that everybody just wants to swoop around him and hear what he has to say. Another thing that's kind of interesting is he was thinking back on when he was a kid, December 7th, 1941, when we had that uh, attack on Pearl Harbor. And I, honestly, I think my dad wanted me to be born on December 7th. I wound up being born on December 8th because I think that was such a significant, memorable day for him as a child. And an important thing when his, some of his family members went to, to war after um, Pearl Harbor. But I have to say, my granddaughter was born on December 7th, so I think my dad got his wish in some way. Um, he has survived so much. That's what his daughter Vicky has said. And just before Higgins thought his party was coming to an end, his family put the icing on the celebration. They walked him outside to find a surprise parade worthy of the 4th of July. More than 200 participants in vintage cars, rumbling motorcycles, and bicycles rode by on Discovery Park Drive while another hundred people lined the street. It was the kind of parade Ben hasn't seen in two years due to the pandemic. Uh, Mr. Higgins wore red, white, and blue Hawaiian shirts. I think that's very fitting. And his hearing aid and Pearl Harbor survivor's hat soaked up that scene. He sat in a folding chair on the curb and saluted everyone who passed by. I wish I had other pictures that I could share with you. He also has the Hawaiian lay on his, around his neck. Um, he said he's just so grateful to have friend up and have so many people participate in the special birthday. I hope you have a fantastic birthday. Um, his late wife's brother-in-law lives to be 106. So perhaps there is some longevity there for him as well. Obviously there's longevity there. Um, he said he's a, uh, Still, ever said he still has his sense of humor. He said he's going for 110. And um, at his funeral, the one thing that he requests is that they do not play taps. So <laughs> definitely has his sense of humor intact. Mr. Higgins, happy birthday, and thank you for your duty to our country. We, we appreciate you tremendously. So let's see who is next. I think we're going to bring Steve on. And um, we'll have that character question that he has. We'll, we'll talk through an answer. So let's see. No, oh, you're not showing up, Steve. Let's see. There we are. 
Muted is here, but he's not showing up. I bet we can I'm here. You. Okay, I'm why don't you ask a question? Because for whatever reason, you're not popping into the screen. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. But you can hear me? I can hear you fine. Yeah. I've always been told I had a good face for radio, so maybe that's it. I know. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> so, what is so my question part? is, this is a really good one, too. Um, I think a lot of people will relate to. So uh, Vera writes in, she says that her dad does not like being around much of old people. He thinks they're, his contemporaries are dull. And the way he talks, the way he communicates to them is not necessarily very kind uh, towards his, with his comments. And she also thinks that he may be suffering some uh, mental issues, some lapses in memory himself. And so she wants to get some advice on how she could discuss these topics with him. That's really interesting and tough and probably not something that will be accomplished in one conversation, obviously. But um, I think when, when we do age and we do have friends who do have some incapacities, it does become difficult to have that same relationship we've always had. I think it's important to maintain friendships with people who are younger than us too, um, not just because of people aging as much as, I think it's really important to stay connected to younger generations and their influences and for you to influence them as well. And if, if her dad is having some issues with his memory though, um, that, that's a little bit different and it may be that he's seeing his impairment and he's worried or he's seeing impairment in his friends and so he's kind of repelling away from them. That is not uncommon. Uh, and I would say if she thinks there's a problem, um, it is something that should be looked into, discussed with his doctor. Uh, and it's, um, it, it's something that will probably take a little while to uncover, but watching for when and how he's reacting a certain way, I think it's important, and just kind of watching the behavior, what, what's the antecedent to the behavior, what happened before the behavior. So if there's something kind of paralleling routinely what's going on, um, we, we do that. So um, I, I wish her very well. I think it'll be a little bit of a process. Um, but that is a great question and something that I think people deal with fairly routinely. So thanks a lot uh, for bringing that question up. Um, Absolutely. There we go. There you go. There we are. <laughs> I was here. I told you. It was a button. <laughs> <laughs> so we have okay. Ruby Day with us today. And we also have Melinda. She's going to talk a little bit about um, I, I think we could talk a little bit about ageism in, in TV and how, how sometimes I think it stereotypes people. I don't I don't think that's good either. So we'll see what she has to say. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. You had a full show. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'll talk to you later, okay? All right, sounds good. All right, thanks. We'll bring in Melinda. Hey, you, how are you this morning? Oh, I've got you on mute, so there you are. How are you? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> I couldn't be better. Um, Great. I was excited to hear that Herbie was coming on to talk about the parallels between TV and real life, because I definitely think there, you know, we look to uh, film and TV, um, it, it heavily influences body image and oh, um, yes, you're right yeah so uh, uh you know when we when we see images um either of what a man should look like or what a woman should look like in our tv and film it informs us about what our body should look like but even a step further the way that aging is portrayed in film and tv influences how we believe we're supposed to age and mm -hmm. i would argue there's not a lot of um, positive, you know, um, examples of aging in film and TV, you know, um, and, and w one of the things that I talk about with people when they come into the strength shop is um, what's common with aging should not necessarily be normal. You know, we yes. expect as a society 
that as we age, we will start, you know, start to become very sick. Um, and that's not necessarily the way aging should be. And I love how you um, showcase a sentence, sent sent oh my God, I can't say the word today. Sentence. It is a hard <laughs> word to say. <laughs> morning for me, I guess. Yeah, um, uh, but I love that you showcase um, those people every week because it gives us it gives us another oh. another model of of how aging can be. And um, I know a lot of times uh, the people that you showcase, they're happy, they're moving around, they're talking, they're involved with their lives. Um, and so uh, we can, you know, we can shape the, the way that we, you know, live the rest of our lives, the way that we age. So we don't necessarily have to <laughs> have to look to TV and film for those models when, when you provide them. But, um, you, you know, know it's, it's, actually, it's true, though. You think about uh, when was the last time you saw somebody who was inspirational as an older person and wasn't shown as being the the crap it. it was kind of interesting i think what was it was it camino el camino the one with clint eastwood um how he became an inspiration to the neighbor kid in um, yeah midwestern town or eastern town and uh, but you don't see that that often golden girl comes to mind but usually oh i love golden kind of, girls yeah it's They're kind of decrepit and curled over and and that's not that's not true so tell us also how do you avoid some of these images and, and inspire people um, through their aging process to there was, there was another, there was another show that I really liked. It was Frankie and something on Netflix. And that was- Oh, that's a great one too. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Really but is. Yeah. I, I think also a big problem is that in TV and films, a lot of times um, I know that uh, I first moved to Los Angeles before I even got into the fitness and nutrition world, I was pursuing acting and it was, it's a very um, accepted belief that you can age out of acting. <laughs> like you, start oh, to, you start to not be hired anymore the older you get. Um, well, I think it's interesting too, because it seems like unless you're willing to be a character actor and pretend that you're old or um age into something where you get to be the granny i i just mm -hmm. i don't know i just find it very interesting we're not bun wearing gray-haired ladies anymore and that's still the way to be yeah. left to portray women so yeah it's worth your hand yeah. that you'll hit somebody right <laughs> it's it's really like that was really eye-opening for me when i started working in fitness especially with um you know, my clients who are older, it, I would meet all sorts of um, women, especially because I am a woman that I really looked up to. And I was like, wow, they're doing it right. They're traveling, they're, they're having fun. Um, you know, they're dressing in clothes that make them feel good. You know, they weren't, like you said, like <laughs> um, the same aging in the same way that I guess we expect from watching film and television. The Golden Girls was such a great show. <laughs> like, okay. I want to be, I want to be like them when I, when I'm, when I'm that age. But exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, given, given the fact that we do lose muscle mass every single year, so we're kind of trying to do a little catch up, regardless. Yeah. What do you think is the big takeaway we should have in regards to maintaining our core and our strength and our power in our bodies as we age. What do you think is, uh, you well, give us a I, th I think mindset <laughs> goes a long way. So when we see images of, you know, I guess that tell us that we're not going to be attractive or that we can't do certain things. I mean, we have a client who came to us in 2017 at the age of 77 um, who wanted to climb Mount Fuji. And she worked with us for six months and then went and climbed. Wow. And it's wow. like, why, why do we have to listen to the, you know, um, I, I just read another study. Oh my God, this is amazing. In France, they did some, uh, they, they did some experiments with a 100 year old cyclist 
that beat the world record for cycling. And this is the, this is the part that gives me chills over the course of, uh, they, you know, they performed these studies on him. Um, he actually improved in performance at age 103 improved. Wow. That is, wow. Isn't that wow. amazing? That's it amazing. possible. It's possible. Well, I, think, I think we are living longer, obviously, but we want to live better. And mm -hmm. I think to your point, the fact that he's improving is so amazing. So yeah. he's, he's pedaling faster. What the study did say mm -hmm. was that a mixture of high intensity and low intensity pedaling mm -hmm. was how he he was able to uh, to see the most improvement in his cycling performance, but he then he then performed better in the next in that race at 103. I mean, I Amazing. it's not we don't have to 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 decline as we age. We can choose not to, and and there are other people who are doing it. We just don't see those those models typically, but. Yeah. Um, if you can, if you can believe, if you can, um, you know, change your mindset around what aging can look for, you know, can look like for you, that those things are possible. It is possible to improve our performance after the age of 100. Um, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So how uh, about, I think, oh, one last, one, one last one from you. Mm -hmm. One yeah. last um, golden nugget from you. I think too, as, mm -hmm. You know, as we get older, um, you know, I like to think of my body as as a car, <laughs> like, and yeah. soon it'll it'll be a classic car soon. And you know, the care that we have to put into an older car or a classic car is a little bit different than the care we put into the brand new, where we don't have to really do anything. <laughs> you know? That's um, a great point. Yeah. And, and so it's like, you know, when, when the body breaks down as we get older and things pop up, you know, I've seen people hate on their bodies. And mm -hmm. I think the big thing to come back to is your body's carried you through all these years, all these different experiences. Um, yeah, there, mm -hmm. there's going to be like some breakdown <laughs> at some point. Mm -hmm. And it's how we get through we get through that, but also I think the mindset of being very grateful for the journey that our body does carry us on is a part of that. Um, and, and then just, you know, when we're contending with illness or, um, injury or, you know, the, some of these things that naturally occur as we age, you know, uh, give your body the proper conditions to heal or to flourish as best as it can at any age in any condition. I agree. So. Thank you. Great advice, Melinda Hughes. <laughs> really appreciate you. And if you were around at the end of the show, we'll come back and, and say goodbye. Okay. All right. Now we're going to talk to Herbie. I'm really excited to hear about him. And, I can't uh, wait. Share. I know. Exactly. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay. Talk to you soon. And now we're going to bring Herbie in. Yeah, I'm excited to hear about his new book. Herbie, welcome. It's not a book. It's a new article. Okay. It's just enough about Sunny and Cher. But I loved everything you guys were talking about before about the ageism thing. Um, because yeah. it's so true. And it's not just ageism that's an issue on TV today or in the film or in film. It's perfectionism. You know, oh, like, yeah. it's perfection, uh, yeah, ism, really. If, if you look at the new shows today, everybody's beautiful. Everybody's perfect looking. There's no flaws. They're all young. So it's not just, just that they're all young. They're all perfect. You know, if you go back in the, in the days of Gilligan's Island, you know, you had a happy yeah. man, a skinny guy, an older couple. You had certainly the movie star, the country girl, but they were all yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I completely agree. And that's a lot to kind of put up with then, too. And no wonder our children's body images and so forth are so horrible. Plus, we can post all these photos with all of the lines drawn out and buffed out and looking beautiful and perfect. So nobody puts anything. It's like your Christmas card, right? And your Christmas letter. Everything's going to be perfect. That's news. Not right. anything that's not. 
going well. So that's a great point. It's, it's insane. It's, it's high expectations that you cannot live up to. And it, it depresses people and it, there's no comfort. There's no nurturing sense. It's either you look perfect, you look beautiful, or you're no good. I mean, that's essentially the message that today's TV and, and films are sending. And, and it's also the lack of talent. Um, I mean, back in the day, if you, if you got a television series or if you got um, yeah, exactly. um, a movie mm -hmm. and you have this experience that you bring to, you know, TV and film. Today, you do a YouTube video or if you're an influencer, as they say, with a million hits, you get a series. But you have to have talent, but it doesn't right. matter. So it's, it's, it's just crazy. It is crazy. Well, but you know what? Cher actually, to me, is the epitome of someone who has maintained her her uh, uh, her, her weight and her, her strength and her youth. And um, I think she's a great role model, um, you know, to the extent that I would say, she, yeah. you know, because... Yeah. You know, they met when Sonny and Cher met in the 60s. She was very young and he essentially guided her career. He was the manager, more or less. He wasn't the one with all the performance talent. She had that. So then right. their career in music kind of, yeah. kind of died yeah. out. Summer show in the summer of 71. It was a hit and was brought back as a regular show. And then it went on for three years and then they got divorced. And then she tried to come back with her own show. He tried to come back with his. Those failed. And then they reunited in a new Sonny and Cher show. But this time they weren't married. They were divorced. And joking about being married or joking with each other when you're married is adorable. Joking with each other when you're divorced and putting each other down is not adorable. So it's they a little angry, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. And then he dies. So years later, he dies. She makes this incredible appearance at his eulogy or at his service in Palm Springs, where he was the mayor, by the way. And yeah. she talks. She has no makeup on, no flashy dresses. She talks about how much she loves Sonny. It was an immense celebrity eulogies that was made in public before it became a hip thing to do like it is today. Wow. And, and then a couple years after that, she blossomed with her career. Um, she just really kept on going and she had more surgeries, whatever. Okay, look, at, I'm not one for extensive surgery, all right? Want to get a nose job here and there, get a, lip, a little nip and tuck, fine. Extensive, extensive, extensive. I cannot support that in a Michael Jackson kind of way. But Cher sure. really somehow tapered all of that and came out perfect, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, no, I mean, she really, she, yeah, and, and I think she continues to develop new music and new, uh, new like, image of herself. Remember, she had her blonde era, and she's had, always had her long hair. I think that's always been her. Right. Her key. She, rem yeah, she remains current. I think she's doing a broad. Yeah. Show me that she's working on, so. And she's been great on TV, and but I love that show, the Sunny and Cher show itself. So tell us a little bit more. I, I just remember getting my little tape recorder, wanting to tape them, and then when her daughter would come on, it was like, Ooh, yeah. oh, yeah. Do. And so tell us more about your article that you are publishing, and a little bit more about kind of their inner, inner life. Yeah. Yeah, well, I wanted, to, with the articles that I do for the Television Academy, I usually write 50th anniversary type articles or tributes. And since this is the summer of uh, 2021, 50 years ago, Sonny and Cher, the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour debuted. So I wanted to pay tribute to it. So uh, I interviewed a couple of the producers of the show, and I also went to the DVD um, extras. that were on the DVD and the original producers, Chris Beard and Alan Bly. It was such a unique show because, you know, there was the Carol Burnett show and that was legendary, but Sonny and Cher were the first musical group mm -hmm. to, to host a variety show. Then came Tony Orlando and Dawn. 
Then came the captain and Tennille. But Sonny and Cher were the first to do that. And they were funny. They were edgy. Um, they weren't offensive. They would mess up during, you know, the skits and that would be part of the fun of it. It was just tremendously loose for its time. And Steve Martin was one of the writers and one of the extras or one of the uh, supporting comedy team before he became a wild and crazy That's guy. Interesting. So, I did not know that. That's interesting yeah. factoid. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so tell me a little bit more. Did you do more research on what their personal life was like in relation to how they presented in real life or on TV, or TV life? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they really never got along. <laughs> they never got along really at all. I mean, it was just one of those kinds of relationships, you know. But when when the the director said, you know, action, they were dynamite together. And you had mentioned, you know, Chastity, their little two-year-old daughter who today yeah. has transitioned into Chaz, an actor, a, a very respectable actor. But in 1971, he was this adorable little two-year-old girl that everybody just welcomed. It was, it became something that people looked forward to seeing Chastity at the end. Um, you know, at the end of the show, Sunny and Cher would bring out Chastity. They'd hold her up and they'd say goodbye to the audience. And it was, it was something that was a community. Yeah, and they had little matching outfits. Type thing. Love the family. Yeah, it, it, you know, it did. It made you realize, just like today, we're, you know, the big word is to be authentic, but right? being yourself and, and showing the family style, and, and just, I don't know, everybody appreciates love and, and kindness and gentleness. And I think it was just something that it just, it just, it just it was appealing to people. It said, it's, it's, why, it's why we loved them. We loved seeing them together. We loved that they were joking together as married people, which, you know, all kinds of relationships really that work always do that. But, but that's why it didn't work when they tried to do the reunion show after they got divorced. The, the magic was gone, you know. Uh, and certainly the magic was gone when they tried their own singular show. Yeah, they didn't have the dynamic. So Sonny without Cher, as a superstar, after he died, you know, what was she going to do? Come back and do uh, an act with his ghost? He was gone. So she right. had to survive, and she just reinvented herself into being, you know, not just a performer, but a Oscar-winning actress. I know. Very, very talented. In fact, I wonder, well, she might be going for that, what do they call it when you get the Tony, the Grammy, the... Um, the Oscar, the there's only was that Rita Moreno is the only person that has yeah, the there, there's a word, yeah, yeah, amazing, yeah, it's an Enoch or something. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a like a, something you call it, put the they put the initials together, and that's what you win, or that's what you are if you've won a, an Emmy, a Grammy, a Tony, and an Oscar. Amazing, oh, amazing. amazing. They're quite talented to be able to do something, and obviously very rare too. So I'm going to bring back our other yes. friends yes. here yes. and um, add them to the end of our our program. And hopefully Melinda knows we're coming. Up. <laughs> hey guys, we so, made it. Uh, oh, Melinda. Uh, Melinda, I think you would make a great new ginger in a Gilgan's Island remake. Oh, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would, what would our roles be? I guess I'd have to be Mary Ann or um, it's a towel. I could do it. Oh, hopefully, I'm not Skipper. <laughs> I'm, I'm too old for Gilligan, so maybe Gilligan's dad. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Homeless has the characters. There you go. <laughs> so, any, yes. any special plans for your weekend? I'm going to Santa Barbara. It's my birthday on Sunday. Oh, happy nice. birthday. Thank you. Oh, right. right. 40 happy early birthday. Oh, my gosh. That's great. Okay. Mary, I know we talked about this before. But we were talking about doing like national days. Today is National Cheesecake Day. We should uh -oh. all have some of that. <laughs> stay away from that. <laughs> Well, we have um, actually.
actually, you know what? I'm not sure. Next week we'll, we'll bring up our um, perk and we'll, we'll look through what um, special day it is. I don't know. The other day was like um, sugar cookie day, National Sugar Cookie Day or something. So it's always something interesting and, and uh, right. fun. So we'll throw some of those out in the future. I like all but, these days. <laughs> yeah, it's, true. it's also National Talking at Elevator Day. So you want to annoy the people you're riding in an elevator with. Oh, I thought you said I thought you said taco in an elevator. <laughs> or taco. That's a very specific place to eat a taco. <laughs> well, my friends, have a fantastic weekend. I'm gonna go weigh in over at Weight Watchers again this weekend and see if I'm down. Last week I was level. I'm I'm getting this extra COVID weight off. My COVID nineteen coming on. Yeah. Well nice. gonna get me there too. <laughs> All right. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. See you later.